another video. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages where I post updates and daily original photos on our life and a lot of the animals we have in our collection. So as you can see, I am back in front of our rat racks. So by popular demand, uh, today we're gonna do another rat breeding video. So I was kind of going through the comments, trying to see maybe what people were interested or maybe what I haven't covered in previous videos. So for today's video, you are in luck because I had a mama that just had a litter of babies and I was able to get some really good footage of her actually having the babies, what the babies look like as soon as they come out with the umbilical cord still attached, um, and then kind of the process of her starting to stimulate them. Um, and, and we'll go over some other things. I'll show you the footage, but I got some really good footage to show you today. So before we get into that footage, there are, I think, two things I'm gonna cover in this video. And the first is what size do new holdback females need to be um, in order to start breeding them? I think I've covered this in another video, but I wanted to cover it again because it's really important when you are holding back females for future breeding stock um, to have them at that right age range as well as the right weight. You know, just like when you're breeding any other animal, um, if you don't know, I breed snakes. That is the main reason for the rats is to feed my collection of snakes. And I am also going to start breeding um, some different uh, designer rats as well. I'm looking into acquiring some different rats. I currently have started uh, acquiring albinos that I'm going to start breeding here pretty soon. So uh, my rats will not just be for feeding purposes. I am going to be starting to breed designer rats for pets only. So the other thing I wanted to address in this video is can mama rats stay together as they are having litters? I've discussed in previous videos how we do heirloom breeding, which is I separate my females into different tubs in order to have their babies. And that way they tend to the babies and don't have, to, don't have that same stress or don't have to worry about another female coming in and stealing or, or anything like that. So for today, I actually have two rats that have done very well together in the past. So I decided to leave them together. Um, when you separate them, they do show signs of stress where they are kind of don't know where to go in the cage, they don't know where to settle down. So I chose to keep them together this time. Now this is where you kind of have to pay attention to the rats that you are breeding. Uh, this is for the individual rat. Um, or rats that you are keeping together. I have bred these two together before and they have done well together having two litters in the same tub so I knew they would be okay. Um, I do have a lot of rats in my collection while well, they will actually steal babies. That is why we chose to do heirloom breeding to begin with. Uh, we had a lot of stealing, a lot of babies dying and so forth. Um, but I still have a couple females that do really really well together. So as you're gonna see in the footage, this particular pair I chose to leave together and they are doing very well. Now this morning, because this, this footage is from the previous day, uh, this morning I just cleaned out all of our rat racks and I did choose to separate them um, because I felt like she wasn't giving her newborn babies as much attention as they were giving to the babies that were born the previous week. So I decided to separate them out so the mother would be more attentive to her own babies and less to the other mama's babies. So, so far um, this morning we lost four babies. Uh, a lot of the babies in this litter were really small. So we'll see how many are gonna survive. Um, I, I don't know why some come out bigger, some come out smaller. I, I couldn't tell you why some thrive and some don't. I think that's just mother nature taking its course. So she had a total of 16 in this litter. So far we've lost four. Uh, the other 12 are doing well so far, so we'll just have to see how the next day goes. Uh, typically, if the babies survive past 48 hours, then we are good to go and we don't have any other issues. I have noticed with breeding rats that 48 hours is kind of like the, that pinnacle uh, line that you want to get across to know that the babies are going to survive. Most of the time if babies are not going to thrive um, and survive it's going to be within those first 48 hours. 
So let's weigh out some of my holdbacks to see if they're ready to start breeding. And then I'm gonna show you the footage of our new mother giving birth. All right, we got our first mama in there. She is 260 grams, so they are just about ready. Okay, we got that all zeroed out for the next one. And then our next tub up also has four holdback females in here. And they're relatively the same size, but we're gonna see what they weigh as well. All right, and the next one, well, when she stops moving, about 270 grams. So they are ready for the male to be introduced to them, which is awesome. And then this is one of our albino babies that we got. She's tipping the scale. But it looks like they are also ready to start being introduced from our male as well. So we can hopefully get some albino babies. Well, that is awesome. I thought they were going to be kind of right at that, you know, barely 250 or just under and we were going to have to wait a while. But it looks like all of our females are ready to be introduced by the male. So probably in the next few weeks, we are going to start rotating the male through our other females. And that's going to be 10 more females producing for us. So I think I've said this in other videos, it is time to make another rack. I think we are going to make an heirloom rack this time. So the rack will look similar to this one, except it'll have three tubs across that are a little bit smaller. So it'll be just big enough for a mother and her babies. And then as the babies grow up, we will have grow up tubs for each age group to kind of grow up to where we need them to be to feed our collection. Or if they're gonna be pets, then they will be probably sold off in about four or five weeks when they are able to be taken from the mother. All right, so now I am gonna show you our mother from yesterday who gave birth to 16 little pups. Now, she is in the process of giving birth in this video. And so I try to show you to where she is kind of hunched over and she is licking herself because she is getting ready to deliver one of the pups. And then um, you'll see in the video, I show you a brand new newborn pup who hasn't even taken its first breath yet. And then the umbilical cord. And I don't know in rats if they call it a placenta, but it's the little sac on the end of the umbilical cord where the baby rat was getting its nutrition inside its mother. Um, in humans, that's a placenta. I don't know if it's called the same thing as rats. Um, but uh, so you could drop a comment down below if you know what the name of that little sack is, but it looks like a little placenta and I'll show you that in the video. It is not glamorous. So if you are squeamish or don't want to see that, this is your warning to turn away now because I am going to show you things, um, that most people may not want to see, or, you know, there is a little bit of blood and mucus and fluids and things like that. So this is your fair warning. Here's a fresh baby with the umbilical cord still attached. This one's kind of having a hard time trying to kind of massage it. And there's a fresh litter in with our mama with the other babies and she's kind of helping her out a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if this one's gonna make it. This is what the babies look like when they first come out. We still have a little bit of mucus, and this is the little umbilical cord with the little sac. Not the most glamorous thing, but that's what it looks like. That's the little umbilical cord. And Mama will come over here and start licking, and we'll eat that for nutrition. So interesting. And she will stimulate them, and they'll start crying. That one just came out. There we go. This is actually the mama of the other litter. She looks a little rough, but what she's doing is she's helping stimulate the baby and then she's eating that little sack. This mom over here, she's still giving birth, so she looks a little tired. As soon as they're born, they all kind of look kind of purpley like this. And then as soon as they get stimulated, they start to really pink up like that. She 
just had another one back there. And this other mama is actually protecting her and helping her. See how she turns around and she guards her? And then watch, as I get the camera in there, she's actually gonna block her. I know, I'm not getting too close. Another baby was just born. Still kind of connected there at the rear end. So I think Mama is just about done, so I went and got them some raspberries. That'll give her some good energy and nutrition after giving birth. And they're both munching down on those. Those ones are starting to wake up a little bit and gonna wanna be fed. And we got 15 new little babies in here. So this is proof that Mamas can stay together and have litters. It sometimes does work out. And they'll probably both do just fine in here, raising their litters together. And all the babies are finally pinking up and starting to squeak, so mama will come over here in a little bit and start feeding them. No. Those ones are getting hungry. Oh my gosh, those babies are so cute, aren't they? Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, four of the pups did pass away overnight. Uh, right now we have 12 healthy ones, but they are all pretty small. So we'll just have to see how this next day goes. If you are breeding your own rats and you wanna keep mothers together, um, I would pay very close attention to those mothers uh, when they are giving birth. As I said in the beginning of the video, some mother rats cannot be kept together because they will actually steal the babies and that results in death of the newborns. Now some can be kept together and some can't. This depends on the individual rat and that is something that you are going to have to pay attention to and see if that's going to work out for the rats in your colony. Uh, like I said, these two particular rats have done well together from the beginning. I only have one other rat that I trust to leave with other rats. All of the other ones in our colony steal or, and, and they don't kill them on purpose, they just steal to the point where the, it's kind of a tug of war and so they either uh, rip the newborn skin or because they're constantly fighting back and forth, the newborn never gets the nutrition and the heat required to thrive in that first 48 hours. So that is why we really stick to heirloom breeding. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to leave those together and show you that it can be done. If you are limited on space, you just have to pay more attention. You have to be more attentive to your rat colony. So that is it for today's rat breeding video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see anything specific or if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay sane, get out there and make your own footprints. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.